What is going on guys? Welcome to this video. If you've been using MCPs over the last few months, you're going to want to watch this video. Shout out to Mark from the school community. By the way, there's a link to join the school community in the description of this video. But I would have found this out probably by myself eventually because I was kind of on the right path anyway. But there's MCPs and then there's CLI tools and then there's just having your own interface with NPM packages or PIP packages. That's what we're going to be talking about today, guys. Trust me, the, the terminology is not important. Just follow the video. You're going to want to watch this. Let's get into it. Okay, so whether you're a Vibe coder, a developer, it doesn't really matter. You've come across NPM before, right? NPM run dev to start a Next.js project uh, and also PIP, P-I-P, which is Python's version of this. However, Mark from the community put me onto something really, really interesting. So if you know MCPs, you'll know that if I just, let's just go to like digital ocean MCP, for example, right? And then let's just have a look at what this looks like, because I think this is the best way to show this. So you can see um, here, right? You have probably, I'm going to guess 41, and you'll see why in a second, around 41 different things that the MCP can do, right? List apps, create app, get app update app, et cetera, right? We're all very, very familiar with this concept. This is the bread and butter of MCPs, right? But imagine that instead of using an MCP, you use an NPM package, right? Hear me out. So go back to, go. Hey guys, before continuing a quick word from our sponsor, me. After rebuilding Grove with the OpenAI Agents SDK, and now fully understanding AI agents. We are currently looking for a few projects to work on in the first part of 2026, all the way up to 2027. We currently have bandwidth for a few projects making SaaS projects, AI agents that can automate anything. And all of these projects are fully SEO'd as well. As you can see right here, Harbor is getting a lot of clicks every single day after I rebuilt it on Next.js. So yeah, if you've ever wanted to have something build but never really had the budget, come and talk to us today. We are AI augmented and get it done much faster and much cheaper than most companies. There is a link in the description and in the pinned comment. Thank you for your attention. Let's jump back into the content. Go to npmjs.com, right? So this is where all of the node packages, npm actually means node package managers, manager sit. Right. And what I want you to do is I want you to search DigitalOcean. Right. And then you can see this one here, DOTS wrapper. So I'm going to click this. Now, this is where it gets super interesting because if I scroll down, you'll see that it has pretty much the exact same, if not even more detailed, actions that it can do on your behalf. Right. Or that you can do. But what I'm saying is instead of using MCP, instead of using CLI, you build an interface where the AI system that you've built can talk to, for example, the DigitalOcean using their node package, right? I just want to show you a couple of things here. Stripe has one, right? Stripe API wrapper. So what does all of this mean? Like, why am I so hyped up about this? The reason is this is what Manus is doing. This is what, if you think about it, all of these insane AI systems that have been created, right? All they are are AI agents with a node package inside them, right? So if you wanted to build an AI agent that had the capabilities to launch digital ocean products or products on digital ocean for you, and also Stripe, right? This is where things start to get really interesting. Lovable.dev, this is how they're doing it. I guarantee this is how they're doing it. So again, look, if I go up here, super base, guarantee they have one. Obviously they have one. Same thing, right? This is a CLI. I, I think, I guess it's kind of the same thing. It doesn't really matter. But you, you just give it the documentation and you say, build yourself an interface for talking with, for example, DigitalOcean. Okay, so practically, what does this actually look like? So this is the OpenAI Agent SDK. This is what I've been talking about loads recently, guys. If you don't know, I recently rebuilt the entirety of HarborSEO.ai, which is my content writing AI generator, right? SaaS. I rebuilt it using GPT-5 Nano, and the cost went from you know 15 bucks a month for every client to 
probably less than a dollar, uh, maybe. I don't know. It's probably it's probably around a dollar, I would say, right? So what that means is I've been able to offer it completely for free for people, um, as you probably saw the ad in this video if I decide to use that advert. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is what you can do with the agent SDK, right? So you go to TypeScript, Python, doesn't matter because I'm sure DigitalOcean also has some kind of Python integration. Let's say you wanted to make an AI agent that can launch websites for you inside some kind of system that you have. Let's say you have an app builder similar to Lovable, whatever. You want a way to launch those websites on DigitalOcean. And this is what I was struggling with for ages. I couldn't kind of close the gap between, in, in my knowledge, between, you know, I can do that on Claude Code easily using the DigitalOcean CLI, but how do I make a fully autonomous agent have the ability to launch things on DigitalOcean? That's where this comes into play. Because if I go on tools, right, you can make any tool and you might understand where this is going, right? Basically, what you do is you create tools for the AI to interact with. The AI can decide which tools to use, right? You don't need MCPs, forget MCPs, just a simple tool, right? We can even just do this live, right? So. I don't know how much I'm gonna do of this, but if you just copy the tools, right? And then you copied, for example, this page here, um, you probably have to give it to some kind of system that could individually scrape each one of these, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, everything is here. So you just give all of this to an AI and tell it to make an AI agent that can launch websites for you on DigitalOcean, right? So instead of having a preset workflow, what happens when something doesn't work? What happens when, you know, this happens or that happens or with programming, a lot of things can happen that will get in the way, break something, change something, change the way that one website works to another website. It's very, very rarely uniform system. So you need that flexibility, which is where this comes into play. AI agents, that's the whole point of AI agents. If there is an error, what, what happens, right? Because with predefined workflows, and trust me, I know this because I built Harbor originally as a predefined workflow. When something doesn't work, it just breaks, right? Let's say, let's go to generate here. Previously, what happened is if someone didn't put their website, it would just break, right? Because, uh, sorry, their, their sitemap. It, it needed to be their exact sitemap. If they put a fake sitemap, it just generated a load of crap. What it does now is the agent actually checks whether they put a website or a sitemap. And if they put a website, it checks their robots.txt for the sitemap, right? And also if the sitemap 404s now, it, it, it does the same thing. It says, okay, well, the one they've given us is a 404. Let's actually just check the robots.txt and see if there's another sitemap that doesn't 404 and we'll use that instead, right? That's a very basic example, but if you extrapolate that, into something much more complex, like trying to build a system that can launch SaaS projects for you, that's where these tools and NPM come into play, right? Forget MCPs, you don't need MCPs. You could use MCPs if you wanted, right? But I think it's just much, much easier to use their node package instead, right? So what you do is you create code which are basically just like, yeah, it's literally already here. If you click on any of these, I just realized in my head there, all of these, right? They're just tools that can be used by an AI agent, right? And the really cool thing is there are millions and millions of node packages, right? So an interesting one that Mark mentioned was Sharp, for example, which is a image processing thing. Previously, if you had this problem where you, you let's say you have PNG and you want a JPEG, you would have to have some kind of code created that would um, make it into a JPEG, right? But with this, you could actually just have a predefined workflow that could do JPEG, WebP, everything, right? It can do literally everything because it's an, it's a pre-existing system that's been built. It's not you just vibe coding a quick fix. Sorry, guys, just have to click on the giant rock. It's not you having to program a quick fix to this problem where it only does JPEG to PNG because when you're building your app, oh no, okay, I need PNG, so let's do that. No, instead, your AI agent has Sharp and has all of these tools 
that if it encounters this problem where, okay, the image has to be WebP now, whatever, and, you know, the input is suddenly a weird thing that it wasn't expecting, like, I don't know, uh, .gif, for example, or something, it has the ability to just think and then decide which tools to use. It's so much more flexible. You can literally build anything with this, guys. I'm going to be making more videos on this if people are interested, but this is a game changer, I'm telling you, because you're no longer just creating small little tools that fix small little problems. You're using NPM packages directly in your AI agents to create something that will never break and is extremely flexible. Guys, I'm going to leave the video there. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.